Good evening, everyone. Due to technical difficulties, we apologize, but we do not have the recording of the webinar that was held on Zoom on May 31st, 2023. We've done our best to re-record this presentation to provide the community with as much information presented on the May 31st as we can. We're unable to capture the verbal questions that were asked during the webinar, so we've posted a frequently asked questions document on our EnviroStore database which include the webinar written questions and also many questions that were asked during the open house. We sincerely apologize and we thank you for your understanding. Welcome to the Department of Toxic Substances Controls webinar on the ASCON landfill uh, site. Our focus today will be on the pilot testing activities for odor control technologies and a brief update of the ASCON landfill site project since June, 2019. My name is Jessica Anderson, and I am the Public Participation Specialist with the Department of Toxic Substances Control, also known as DTSC, we, uh, who is working on the ASCON Landfill Project. I want to thank you for taking the time to join us today. We sincerely wish you and your families are well and keeping safe. This webinar was scheduled from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, Clayton Larkins and I will be facilitating today's webinar. Okay. Um, after our short presentation, we will have a question and answer session. You're in a view and listen only role, so we'll be taking questions through the Q&A feature and by raised hands. If you have any questions, please click on the Q&A or raised hand icon on the bottom of your screen in the toolbar. And if you're joining by phone, please press star nine to let us know you have a question. You will be called on and prompted to unmute yourself. You may send your questions or comments at any point throughout this webinar, and we will respond to them during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. You may send as many questions as you want. However, we request that you send one question at a time so that we're adequately able to respond to each question. Please note that we will not be taking questions through the chat function. Lastly, our slides have been posted on our EnviroStore database if you would like to follow along that way or save them for your information. We, again, sincerely appreciate your patience, understanding, and cooperation in making this a successful webinar. Okay, and I will introduce our DTSC project team. Uh, we have Clayton Larkins, who's our project manager. We have Ed Moreland, who is uh, the Cypress branch chief. Nick Ta, who is our senior scientist. Uh, ben Stamphill, who is our senior engineer. Dr. Donald Greenlee is our toxicologist. Patrick Shea is our supervising environmental scientist. Jessica Anderson, myself, is a public participation specialist. And Maya Akala is the Office of Environmental Equity Supervisor. Okay. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier, the purpose of the webinar today is to provide information on the upcoming odor control technologies, pilot testing activities at the ASCON site. Today's uh, agenda for the webinar will include the site background, work to date, upcoming field activities, and uh, projected schedule, as well as resources and contacts. Following the presentation, the DTSC team will respond to any questions or comments during the Q&A session. I will now invite our branch chief to uh, make a quick statement. Ed. Thank you, Jessica. Hello, everybody. My name is Ed Moreland. I am branch chief for the Department of Toxic Substances Control in Southern California. I'd just like to start out by thanking you so very much for attending uh, this important webinar. As most of you know, it has been four years since the DTSC halted work on the ASCON cleanup project due to concerns from you, the community, on various issues, but mostly because of odors that were generated during the earth moving activities. I just want to say that we, the department, heard you. So during these past four years, we have overseen a series of studies performed by the ASCON responsible party to really gain a better understanding of, first of all, what these odors were, secondly, how they were generated, and most importantly, how to control them. So this latter issue is what we will be uh, discussing tonight as part of, of this webinar. So with that, 
I would like to turn over the conversation to DTSC's project manager who oversees the ASCON project. And, and this is Clayton Larkins. So Clayton, uh, I will hand things over to you. Great, thank you, Ed, and thank you, Jessica. Um, so we'll start uh, tonight's presentation with brief review of site history and background. The ASCON site is located at the corner of Magnolia Street and Hamilton Avenue in Huntington Beach. And it's a 38 acre property that was historically used as a landfill from 1938 to 1984. Uh, during that time, it received drilling waste from oil production and uh, industrial waste and construction debris. I want to uh, just point out while we're on this slide some the the darker brown areas in the cartoon image of the landfill site on the right of the screen. Those are the lagoon areas in the landfill. And I'll be referencing the lagoons throughout the talk. Slide six, please. In 2015, DTSC approved a remedial action plan for the site. And this remedial action plan included the excavation and removal of waste material from an area known as Pit F. And that work uh, was designed to be con completed underneath a negative pressure tenting enclosure. And that work was completed um, in 2021 at the site. Uh, also, the remedy included strengthening the lagoon areas at the site to support the final engineered cap and also to support equipment during site work. Um, excavating and reconsolidating contaminated soil from the site perimeter into the site interior. And as of the work suspension in 2019, 32% of the uh, excavation and reconsolidation work has been completed at the site so far. And then the remedy also includes construction of an engineered cap to isolate the waste on site, as well as long-term monitoring and management to ensure that the remedy remains effective into the future. Slide seven, please. So uh, progress on the site so far, the remedial action plan was approved by DTSC in June of 2015, followed by approval of the remedial design in May of 2017. In April 2018, Lagoon 5 solidification was conducted in order to uh, support heavy equipment that was needed for abandonment of uh, some oil wells that exist on site. And Lagoon 5 is located in the northeast or upper right corner of the site shown in this figure. Um, January 2019 is when remedial excavation and additional lagoon stabilization activities described in the remedial action plan were initiated. And it was in June of 2019 that DTSC suspended work due to public concerns about air quality. And uh, during that time, and when DTSC suspended work, DTSC established a number of project enhancements required to better control odors prior that needed that uh, DTSC requires to be completed prior to restarting the remediation work on the site. Slide eight, please. So, uh, a number of project enhancements have been developed and implemented since the 2019 work suspension. And uh, that's what's listed here, as well as some additional site activities I'll explain briefly. So project enhancements included installation of a 16 foot barrier fence around the site perimeter, improvements and expansions of the air quality monitoring and stormwater management programs, Improvements to the as the public facing asconhb.com website that now provides regular updates on project status, including air quality monitoring results for the public. Um, 
development of an ASCON alert system, which community members have the option to opt into and can receive updates on project status by phone or email. A third party technical advisor was retained to assist community understanding of project technical elements. Um, in 2020, uh, an emergency repair action was conducted due to uh, slope stability concerns at the northwest berm of the site. And an image of that work is shown in the top right photo here. And it was a uh, highly controlled measure that was overseen by DTSC. And then in 2021, the Pit F excavation was completed. And the final footprint of the Pit F area is shown in the bottom photo. A site wide odor assessment was completed in 2022 and um, an enclosure feasibility evaluation, one of the project enhancement requirements was completed in 2023. Slide nine, please. So I wanna talk a little bit more about this enclosure feasibility evaluation. DTSC directed ASCON to evaluate evaluate the use of a feasible tenting enclosure for the remaining excavation of contaminated soil on site. So for that evaluation, um, uh, 21 environmental projects were reviewed where tenting was used and another 25 tent uh, applications for non-recreational use were reviewed. Uh, as well as consultation with tent vendors and consultants uh, as as tenting would be rec looking at uh, site and project specific requirements for tenting on the site. And this review looked at uh, project requirements such as location, the size requirements of tent uh, of a tent, the terrain the tent would need erected on, uh, project timeframes, potential tent mobility, and the need for an air treatment system in the tent. And the figure to the right is a figure from this evaluation study, and it shows uh, some analysis of slope st stability and what angle a slope would need laid back at based on the material type. And that in turn dictates the required footprint of a tent because a lower angle slope requires a lot larger area to work. So just to give you some idea of the kind of analysis this document available on Enviro store includes. Slide, slide 10, please. So um, the enclosure feasibility evaluation uh, concludes that tenting is not a practical odor control method for the remaining excavation on site for the following reasons. The high odor areas shown in tan on the map to the right, and these are the highest odor areas in tan, are located on the site perimeters at the, the northern, western, and southern boundaries of the site. And these areas have steep slopes. Uh, they are at property boundaries against public and private uh, uh, property lines. Um, and they also have power lines over top of them. All of these complicate the, the logistics of tent setup and takedown, and they present safety issues for workers uh, that would be working inside of a tent. Additionally, due to the um, area that needs remediated and the size restrictions of a tent, uh, using a tent would require many moves, many teardowns and setups, which would significantly extend the remediation period. For all these reasons, uh, conducting the remaining excavation under underneath of a tent was determined to be impractical. And based on these findings, DTSC required on-site testing of alternate odor control technologies. Slide 11, please. 
And that brings us to our upcoming field activities, which will include pilot testing of two odor control technologies, soil vapor extraction and engineering mist and containment, and an additional activity, which is part of the original remedy that uh, has been evaluated to be, uh, we can move forward with this component of the remedy because uh, it's unlikely to cause odors. And I'll explain that further in slides to come. Slide 12, please. So we'll start with uh, pilot testing. So the objective of pilot testing is to evaluate and optimize odor control technologies at site conditions and at a small scale on site. So you can see the locations where these pilot tests will be conducted. The green squares are for soil vapor extraction and the yellow rectangle is where engineered mist and containment will be tested. And these locations were selected because they're some of the highest odor containing soils are located. And they're also a manageable distance from downwind receptors. Slide 13, please. Um, soil vapor extraction uh, is a technology where um, air is removed from within the soil through an extraction well by applying a vacuum. And the figure depicts this pretty well. It shows an extraction well. And the air is uh, brought to the surface and run through a treatment system using granular activated carbon prior to being emitted to the air under a South Coast Air Quality Management District permit. And there are monitoring points along this treatment system to ensure that it's function functioning properly throughout the process. And you can see those as the orange diamonds as different monitoring points in the schematic treatment system. Slide 14, please. So the, the idea here is to evaluate if by um, extracting vapor from the soil prior to excavation if it will reduce odors in the ambient air during excavation. And this will be done by uh, in a multi-phased approach that will entail first installing both the extraction well as well as soil vapor monitoring wells. And then prior to conducting soil vapor extraction, excavating test pits. Uh, and during the excavation of those test pits, data will be collected both on uh, in ambient air and from soil uh, vapor probes to provide information on odorous compounds. And then uh, the soil vapor extraction will be run for approximately four weeks, removing vapor from the subsurface. And immediately following the vapor extraction, another test round of test pitting will be conducted. And then a third round of test pitting will be conducted four weeks later after soil vapor extraction has been stopped. And that's the approach for soil vapor extraction testing. Um, next slide, please. So now I'll explain a little bit about the engineered mist and containment which uses two commercially available odor control products, a bentonite clay-based spray-on uh, material called posi shell and um, cuprodyne clean, which is a chemical odor suppressant that reacts and oxidizes odor-causing compounds in vapor. So the combination of these two materials was first used on site during the 2020 uh, um, Northwest Berm Emergency Repair Work. Uh, image of that is shown to the right there. And uh, this pilot test is going to evaluate optimizing this approach using mesh awnings and different wall configurations to prevent overspray 
and enable a more robust delivery of the cover material and odor suppressant. Slide 16, please. Uh, the objective of this will be to uh, evaluate whether the combination of these products and different wall configurations can be applied effectively under site conditions to mitigate odors during production scale work or work paced at the scale anticipated for full scale remediation. And it will be approached in phases during the pilot test. The first phase will simply be to construct the walls and then uh, something called hydrodynamic testing where just water is sprayed through the pressure washers will be used and this is to evaluate uh, how far the odor suppressants can be are likely to travel during application and that will tell the workers how close they need to be to the walls or how close they need the walls to their work area during working. And that will be done again with just water, not the cooperdyne uh, odor suppressant. And then the third phase, they will begin applying the actual odor suppressants and conducting the excavation. And they will do that uh, with uh, progressively, they'll start with the most conservative three retaining wall configuration and if they are able to maintain odors under the most conservative circumstances they will step step back their approach and do it uh scoot to the one plot over and try with a two wall configuration and a one wall configuration uh next slide please So that's um, pretty much covers the EMC pilot testing. But as part of that, there I mentioned earlier, there's another part of the remedy that can be moved forward during the same mobilization. And that is uh, the reinforcement of Lagoon 4. And the figure to the right shows red arrows. And if you follow the arrows up to the very top arrow, it's pointing to the northwest corner of Lagoon 4. In this area, the remedial design describes using concrete that is on site to cover and reinforce this portion of the lagoon. Uh, however, to move the concrete to the northwest corner, an access road needs constructed across the lagoon. And the top five feet or so of soil in the EMC area has been identified as having low odor potential and would uh, serve as suitable borrow material for extending the road. So this element of the site activity includes uh, taking the shallow soil from the EMC pilot test area, extending a road across Lagoon 4, crushing concrete from existing concrete piles in the central portion of the site, which are shown on the figure uh, as circled areas with dots, uh, and moving that crushed concrete to cover the northwest corner of Lagoon 4, and thereby reinforcing that, finishing the reinforcement of that lagoon. Slide 18, please. Oh. Actually, if you could go back one, thank you. I should mention this this element of the work uh, can be conducted in parallel with uh, other elements of on-site work. It's anticipated to take approximately two weeks, and all of the dust uh, management and odor management and monitoring uh, measures that are going to be conducted for the pilot testing will also be conducted for this. Uh, concrete crushing and lagoon reinforcing work. Thank you. Next slide, please. Uh, so now a little bit about air monitoring during the during upcoming site activities. Uh, there will be on-site monitoring, including uh, 
around the work area, both upwind and downwind stations, as well as numerous site perimeter air monitoring stations. Uh, and the perimeter stations will have telemetry that report within two hours of data recording will post to the ASCON HB website for the community to be able to view. Offsite monitoring includes five uh, stationary stations, as well as uh, two dedicated staff members who will uh, be uh, stationed in the surrounding community and monitoring for odor detection and will report any detected odors back to the work area. They'll also be recording their observations outside of the work area. Uh, monitoring parameters include odors, both on-site and off-site by staff, uh, the telemetry monitoring for dust concentrations, total vol volatile organic compound concentrations, and hydrogen sulfide concentrations. Those will be posted to the ASCON HB website. Analytical laboratory samples will be collected for volatile organic compounds and sulfur compounds, as well as from the perimeter stations for metals and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Slide 19, please. So the uh, projected schedule for this work, pilot testing is anticipated to take approximately three months. Uh, the groundbreaking component of pilot testing work will be contingent upon uh, South Coast Air Quality Management District permit approval. Um, upon completion of pilot testing, uh, the findings should be reported within about two months, and those findings will be used to develop a restart work plan. Upon DTSC approval of the restart work plan, another public meeting will be held and uh, that's anticipated to take about two months which would be uh, likely early 2024 prior to the restart of full-scale remediation on site uh, using uh, the optimized odor mitigation methods and once full-scale remediation is started it's anticipated to take 18 to 24 months to finish the remedial activities on site. Next slide, please. So here are some resources and contacts for the project. Um, all project documents, including these slides, are available on the DTSC's EnviroStore database. DTSC also hosts an ASCON project-specific website. And the ASCON HB website is managed by the ASCON responsible parties and will include the uh, near real-time air quality monitoring data, as well as regular project updates. Questions and concerns from, uh, should be uh, directed to the ASCON community hotline, and a project team member will get back to you most likely within an hour or two. Um, it could be as long as 24 hours, but especially with urgent questions or concerns, they will respond more readily. Uh, and also, you're welcome to get in touch with us at DTSC. My colleague, Jessica Anderson, Public Participation Specialist, and myself, I'm at clayton.larkins at dtsc.ca.gov media inquiries to our public information officer, please. Um, next, and slide 21, please. I'll hand it back to Jessica at this point. Thank you, Clayton. 
Uh, so we're now at the question and answer session of our web webinar. Uh, as I mentioned, we were unable to capture the recording with the verbal questions that were asked during the webinar. So we've compiled a list of frequently asked questions in a document that we've placed on our EnviroStore database. And we've tried our best to include uh, not only the webinar written questions and what we can recall from the verbal questions, but as well as many of the verbal questions that were asked during the open house. So uh, with that said, this concludes our webinar for today. You can submit any additional questions uh, to our project manager, Clayton, at clayton.larkins at dtsc.ca.gov. Um, we sincerely apologize, but thank you for your understanding and for participating today. Thank you again and stay safe.